Joining me now is Congressman Jim Jordan, ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, Molly Hemingway, editor-in-chief of The Federalist and Fox News contributor, and Molly, Monica Crowley, former assistant secretary of the Treasury and host of the Monica Crowley podcast. Thank you all for being here. Congressman, I'll start with you. The president said MAGA sure. forces are determined to take this country backward. Yeah. How should Republicans respond? And has the soul of the nation now been saved that the speech is over? No, I actually think, Raymond, he came across as a sad, angry, kind of bitter old man here. Kind of looked like the, the lighting and all sort of looked like Darth Vader, it seemed to me. <laughs> And understand, in the past four days, he has called half the country fascist and extremist. And the country really wants the real problems out there. They want them addressed, like, like what you pointed out in your statement, in your, in your monologue. We went from a secure border to no border. We went from safe streets to record crime. We went from stable prices to a 41-year high inflation rate. And we went from $2 gas to $5 gas all in 18 months. I think the mm. nation would kind of like those addressed versus being called extremist and fascist and have the government now target your freedoms and liberties like we have seen from the Biden administration Justice Department. Now, Monica, you worked in the Trump White House, so you know optics. If you were going to liken your political opponents to Nazis, maybe employing a backdrop that looks like it could have come out of 1940s Germany, and then this opening was not the way to go. My fellow Americans, <clears throat> please, if you have a seat, take it. I speak to you tonight <clears throat> from sacred ground in America. Uh, <coughs> Monica, can you remember an example of a primetime address by a president so laced with ugly and divisive political rhetoric and a backdrop that looked like that? Well, first of all, uh, the, yeah, the imagery there was almost satanic with that blood red uh, lighting and the two Marines behind him. It was just insane. Look, this was a garbage speech by a garbage president. And the fact he gave this disgusting, dangerous speech at Independence Hall is a sacrilege. He deliberately used two phrases. He talked about extremism because of the association with terrorists and terrorism. And he also spoke about MAGA forces, as if 75 million Americans are part of some subterfuge guerrilla group. But he deliberately used that kind of language because he is making no secret of his intention of turning half the country into enemies of the state. And the purpose of that is so that they can leverage the power of the state against us. This is an incredibly dangerous moment for the country. Mm. Every dictator throughout history has employed this kind of language with that kind of backdrop. And mm. for most Americans, I think they're, they're really starting to see what is actually happening here, which is that the most dangerous threat we face is that our own government has now been fully weaponized against us to the point where not only are the most fearsome agencies of the, of the country uh, mm. turned against us from the DOJ, FBI, and IRS, but also the president of the United States, who is supposed to effectively represent us all and instead has turned to all of his forces and fire upon half the country. Mm -hmm. Molly, uh, then Biden went on to claim that it is the right who is engaged in grievance and culture wars. Watch. We're going to make the 21st century another American century because the world needs us to. That's where we need to focus our energy. Not in the past, not on divisive culture wars, not on the politics of grievance, but on a future we can build together. Uh, Molly, who started these culture wars uh, over school curricula and, and uh, abortion? And how is returning abortion to the states destroying democracy? Well, you know, I keep thinking you're making all these allusions to the summer of violence that we saw in 2020, where cities were destroyed with arson, where dozens of people were killed, where thousands of cops were injured, where so much destruction happened. And President Trump gave a speech at Mount Rushmore, where he did condemn political violence and also praised mm -hmm. our country and spoke about the higher good that we all should aspire to. And the corporate media called that speech dark and divisive. This speech is easily the most disgraceful speech from a president in recent decades. It is horrifying how he is 
issuing a call to war mm -hmm. against every single American who didn't vote for him or doesn't support him. And that's a lot of people, mm -hmm. because his approval ratings are horrible. And part of the reason why is because, as you note, Democrat policies are very corrosive to the body politic. Mm -hmm. The culture war, where they are attacking people for recognizing biological reality or for lying about what the Dobbs decision does, which enables people to have a say in whether to protect women and children uh, from, from what we'd experienced under the abortion regime previously. This is just—it's a really dark and dangerous time, and it's at a time when violence has been committed recently against churches, Republican offices, uh, maternal care centers, Supreme Court justices who've been nearly assassinated. He didn't condemn any of that, and it's very dangerous. Yeah, no, uh, selective outrage. Uh, Congressman Jordan, here's what Biden thinks about 74 million Americans. Listen, I want your reaction. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election. Now, now Congressman, he, he constantly tried to invoke President Trump and MAGA Republicans. But whether President yeah. Trump is in the picture or not, one gets the feeling they would be branded in the same way with the same language. Right. No. And Monica and Molly are both right. They are trying to weaponize the government against half the population, against any Republican, any conservative, anyone who voted for President Trump. And we see that it's so bad that we have had 14, I've talked about this, 14 whistleblowers come to our office as FBI agents come to us as whistleblowers talking about this whole narrative to treat everyone and label everyone as an extremist who simply opposes the radical policies of the left and of the Democrat Party. As Molly said, this is a dangerous and frightening time. The country, though, sees it. I've been out across the country helping candidates. The people I talk to, they see it for what it is. They're very nervous, and I think they're going to show up in a big way on November 8th and say, enough of this. we got to put this in check and put Republicans back in control. Monica, a new Quinnipiac poll shows that a majority of Democrats and Republicans both agree the nation's Democracy is in danger of collapse. 67% of Americans agree with that. 69% of both Republicans and Democrats also agree. Yeah, uh, Monica, isn't that actually proof that Biden is dividing the country? Because obviously th they think democracy is falling for different reasons, Republicans and Democrats. And it's not about unity. Yeah, exactly right. When you see the split along those lines and you see the, the numbers almost identical for Republicans and Democrats and even independents, it tells you that they're viewing the divisions in the country as extremely problematic for the future of America, but for very different reasons. This speech tonight was like an orgy of projection. Everything that uh, President Biden accused Donald Trump and conservatives and uh, the America First movement of they themselves are guilty of. Every single thing that he accused our side of doing, he and the Democrats are guilty of. And I think most Americans now see mm. that. And, and I do think this is a precarious moment because we're at a real tipping point here. And I think a lot of the people he accused of being enemies of the state today really feel like this is the hill to die on. You know, the other side is at war with the Constitution, free market economics, economic freedom, individual liberty. And we're out here trying to preserve all of those things for the children and, and grandchildren of this country, and the other side is literally at war. And Molly, any Republican me... who is running for office needs to understand that and campaign on that for the future. Molly, I want to get to you before I run out of time. I, I want to get your reaction to the media's response to this speech. Listen. There were those moments of the American dream right, uh -huh. where he reminded w the country of what does actually make America great and what we can do from here, right? There was hope. Just as, as Lincoln gave the House divided speech, here is the time when President Biden has chosen. <laughs> Molly, your take on this, uh, apparently a group of historians met with Biden and convinced him that he was like FDR and Lincoln, FDR before the war and Lincoln during the war. Your take on this, trying to cast Biden as a wartime president. 
I think it's very difficult to defend anything in this speech, and anyone who does it is having to work really hard to do it. You do not unite the country by going to war against half the country. You don't unite the country by weaponizing the Department of Justice to take out any and all political opponents. I mean, it is just sheer gaslighting what we're going through with the uh, amount of executive authority that is being held by by Joe Biden and how he's abusing that, whether it's through the, the loan uh, scheme that he's using to buy votes, his weaponization of the Department of Justice, or any of the other policy issues that he's going through. And it's to—it's just—it's—it's—you to, it's just, it's, it's <laughs> you wonder, you wonder how much more can happen and that corporate media will defend, but apparently we see tonight that they're willing to defend and no, excuse no, I, anything. Molly, I sympathize with you. I think everybody's at a loss for words. How do you even put this fiction yeah. in, in context? Because it's so at odds with the reality before us. Panel, I thank you all for being here tonight on this important night. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.